Welcome back to another review, ladies and gentlemen. I really appreciate you guys checking out my channel. Everyone that subscribes is, means a lot to me and that likes my videos, comments, anything like that. You guys rock. Thanks a lot for checking it out. Today I have my first uh, wearable review. This is the Fitbit Versa and I picked it up, oh, about a week ago, I would say. Been using it ever since um, and I wanted to compare it because I've also owned the Apple Watch Series 3 Nike Edition and I just kinda wanted to compare the two tell you guys which one I enjoy more which one I'm gonna keep and I can just kinda show you guys the features so I'll uh, let's open this guy up and take a look alright so first things first I just wanna get some things out of the way right off the bat because this might make a decision for you uh, about you know a minute into this video the Fitbit Versa is is similar but also a lot different than the Apple Watch. This is more geared towards the fitness focus people that want just a few smartwatch capabilities whereas I would say the Apple Watch is for those that want you know pretty good fitness watch but also want a great smartwatch uh, experience. So the Versa has some smart features you can see here it can play songs you can get calls and texts and calendar alerts you can get apps from their very very limited app store compared to the Apple watch um, but what it will do is keep you on track to reach your fitness goals so steps distance calories floors uh, your exercise per day sleep tracking uh, breathing and moving that that is what this device is made for it is very good at keeping you on track to reach your fitness goals and then it also has some smartwatch capabilities um, it doesn't have onboard GPS like the Apple watch which might also be a kicker for some of you it uses kind of your phone's GPS they call it connected GPS not a big deal for me I don't really run outside all that much but if you're a runner that might be a kicker for you um, it is water resistant to 50 meters and the big thing for me is that this has four days of battery life compared to the Apple watch where you can get maybe a day and a half and if you really stretch it two days but that's about it so in terms of design I think Fitbit did an awesome job with this device it's if you can get past this rectangular display that many people don't like it's lightweight it's thinner it's definitely a lot lighter and thinner than the Apple Watch is you have three buttons instead of the scroll mechanism and the one button on an Apple Watch it sits a little bit more flat on the bottom you can see the heart rate sensor there um, it, it's a little bit more flat, doesn't have the bulge like Apple Watch has, um, so it sits a little bit more flush to your wrist. It's easier to slide a sleeve over it. Um, and I sometimes even forget I'm wearing this. It's so light and thin, so I think they did a good job there. Um, one thing I do not like is the bezels. I'll try to show you this in the sunlight there. You can kind of see it there. Bezels are quite thick. The display is still super nice. It's easy to read in any sort of lighting. I just wish they would have shrunk those bezels a little bit. And then the other thing is these straps that come with it. They're just uh, the awful straps. They are stiff, the rubbery feeling. It just it feels like they spent a lot of time making a great device and slapped a 50 cent strap onto it. But the good thing about that is is that they're interchangeable slide these off by different ones and then that's might be the reason why they put such an ugly strap on it so that you have to buy new ones but other than that I think the design is very good very lightweight very sleek and they did a good job so here's what it looks like on my wrist I have pretty thick wrists so you can 
kind of get an idea of what it might look like on yours. It sits very flush. Again, it's very lightweight. It, the sensors work very well, so when you flick your wrist over, it turns on the watch. It sits very flush, which I like. And you can kind of see those ugly straps on it right now. They don't feel the best, but other than that, it feels great on your wrist. All right, so taking a look at the interface on this device, if you want something that's simple, easy to get around and access you know, your, your information and your apps, this is probably a better device than uh, an Apple Watch would be. It's very simple to, uh, to get around in and understand, so I'll just kind of show you how to access different things. Starting off watch faces, there's a ton of them you can choose from in the Fitbit store. Uh, swiping up will bring up your today. This will show you kind of your current fitness for the day. It's very early, so please don't judge my progress so far, but you can easily see steps, stairs, um, distance, and that sort of thing. You can see uh, your battery percentage and the date right there. Steps you take in the hour, and then your current heart rate and latest workout. And going back, if you swipe down, brings up the notifications. I currently don't have any. Again, please don't judge. And then swiping left will get you to your apps. So you have the exercise here. Oh, and I just got a notification. You can swipe up just to dismiss those. Exercise, you have, and you can customize these. You can put, you know, if you want to do, put run or hike first, you can do that in the app. I think there's about 20 or 30 different exercises that you can choose from to put on this device. So easily access uh, exercise to get started. Um, this button right here will help you go back. And then you have music, alarms, coach, relax as a breathing app. Weather, timer, settings, those are all pretty basic. You have Pandora, which is nice. So if you have a Pandora uh, subscription, you can put songs on this device, listen to them while you're working out through uh, wireless headphones. I don't use Strava or Starbucks. I think those are just paid for to put on there. I put Philips Hughes on there because I do have some smart lighting. I haven't tested it out yet, but I'm kind of excited to do that because it's really the only other app that was in the app store that that uh, um, I wanted to put on this device. They're, the app store is very limited compared to the Apple store, but you can see how basic this is. It's very easy to understand, and again, that goes back to this is a fitness first device, and then it has just a few smart features. Hopefully they add to this um, in the future, but right off the bat, I mean, you can see how simple it is to uh, just get around and see different things So this is the charging mechanism that they use for the watch It's pretty large and bulky um, And what you do is is you squeeze the bottom here. There's two little things you press opens it up You just take your watch Set it in there let go should be charging. There's no indicator that it's charging which is a little weird but this is what it looks like on your desk. You can see it takes up quite a bit of room. And then what you do to take it out, you just squeeze again, pop it out. And I'll just give you a size comparison. This is the Apple Watch charger. So you can see on a, on, a, on a nightstand or a small desk, it does take up quite a bit more room. Um, it's a little bit of an eyesore, but you know it's, it gets the job done. All right, so it's time for a showdown between these two. I'm going to just do an elliptical workout, like a 30-minute elliptical workout. Um, I have these two on my wrist like this, and then I have a heart rate monitor on my chest to compare the heart rates to, and we'll just see which one is more accurate. So I'll jump on the elliptical and be right back. All right, so I just finished my workout, and you'll have to excuse me, I'm a little bit out of shape, but I wanna take a look here and see how close these were. So, 
went about 40 minutes and you can see on both these 40 minutes 3,821 steps this is on elliptical so I'm not sure how accurate that is uh, average pulse was 145 and 145 on here too so the exact same highest was 161 160 on the Apple watch calories it gave me 180 calories 500 I'm sorry 580 and 538 on the Apple watch what I did notice was that the Apple watch struggled a little bit at the beginning it's, it was only giving me a heart rate of about 90 when my Fitbit was saying about 120 which was right on par uh, with my heart rate strap so I was, I'll say that right off the beginning the Fitbit was a little bit more accurate but you can see here they're showing me almost identical numbers other other than that first two minutes so they're both very good I'd say they're both very accurate um, at tracking and obviously you can give off similar numbers for the same workout so it's good to see so one last thing I just want to show you is the amount of battery life a workout takes up um, so on the Apple watch I checked it before I started it was at 20% and I'll just check it now so it's at 5% now or I'm sorry 15% now so a 5% decline in battery after a 40 minute workout and the Fitbit started at 44% before the workout and now it is at 41% so 40 minute workout only took 3% off the battery on the Fitbit So to wrap up this video and give my final thoughts, uh, which one am I going to keep? I think I'm going to keep the Fitbit Versa, to be honest with you. And there's a couple reasons why. Uh, number one is the battery life. Four days of battery life just blows the Apple Watch out of the water. And that way you can also get some sleep tracking in. You don't have to worry about charging it every night, which is a nice added feature. Uh, number two is that while I like the Apple Watch a lot, I just don't use any of these apps on it. Um, I find it weird to use an app on your wrist. I, f I find it too small and it just it's just not for me. Uh, I'd rather just pull up my phone and look at an app uh, than use it on my wrist. So I just don't use this feature which is a big selling point for the Apple Watch. And number three, I just I wanted something to track my fitness first and foremost. And that's exactly what the Fitbit does. The Apple Watch does it too, but this is built for fitness. And then send me some notifications second. So, uh, you know, if I don't have my phone by me and I get a text message or a call, I just want to know if I need to respond to it right away or, you know, if I need to go get my phone to check it out. That's all I really want uh, from the smart, you know, smartwatch side of things is just some notifications to let me know because like I said I don't use the app so and at the end of the day this one is $150 cheaper than this one so uh, you know I think that this one is just a better value for me personally you know if you're heavily into apps on your wrist or you know this one might be better for you or if you're huge into the ac uh, Apple ecosystem this one might be better for you but to me this one is just a better value for me so you know I hope so I hope this video helps you guys out like I said they're both amazing devices you can't go wrong with either one it's just finding out which one better suits your your needs a little bit more really appreciate you guys watching if you look if you like the video make sure you press that like button subscribe for more I'm gonna get more videos out soon and thank you again for watching catch you on the next one guys